Hi, this is Gail with Beta Jewelry Diva. Today we are going to do a Dutch spiral bracelet. This is the bracelet we're going to be making today. And with the skills learned in this bracelet, I will also tell you how to make this necklace and we'll also talk about adding the, the ends to it, etc. So we'll talk about what I did differently with the necklace versus the bracelet. We are using Super Uno beads on this one, so um, if you've been wondering what to do with your Super Uno beads, this is a perfect project for them. Before we get started, I'd like to say that if you enjoy this video, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Dutch Spiral videos, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up or leave a comment below. Anyway, we are going to learn to do the bracelet. If you need to learn how to do Dutch Spiral itself, the beading stitch itself, go ahead. I'll pop up a link uh, to a, a video that I did on just how to do Dutch Spiral. This is going to be more about the bracelet itself. So, now that you, you've got that all out of the way, let's go ahead and see what we need for supplies. And now for the supplies that you're going to need for this bracelet. You will need some Super Uno beads. I think I'm using full amber. Uh, you will need some fire polished beads. These are four millimeters. You will need some size eight seed beads. And you'll need three different colors of size 11 seed beads. You'll need a needle and thread. And the thread that I'm using today is eight pound fire line. I suggest that you use eight pound if you have it. Um, you could use six pound, but I really think this is best. Um, I've also tried this with wildfire and I wasn't as happy only because wildfire is a little stiffer. Uh, you'll also need a pair of scissors and that should be it. So let's go ahead and get started. Here's the sequence that I have strung on. I have the four millimeter um, fire polished round. I have a size eight seed bead, a size 11 seed bead, the super uno, then I have another size 11, and this size 11, this pink one, is going to be my um, bridge bead. And then four of, or excuse me, three more size 11s. So that's my sequence. I am going to run these down till I've got, oh, about six to eight inches of a tail. And then I'm going to go back through all of the beads. You can, if, if you're not real familiar with the Dutch Spiral, I do have a video on how to do Dutch Spiral. <clears throat> this is going to be more along the lines of how to make the bracelet. All right, so here I am. My tail is coming, or my working thread is coming out of this size 11 here. I'm going to go into my fire polished. So I've gone all the way around and then into one more bead. So here I am. Now I'm going to add a fire polish. And this fire polish is going to be sitting in between this fire polish and these two beads. I'm going to put my needle through both of the beads, the size 8 and the size 11, because I'm going to be treating those as, as one bead. And one thing you gotta love about Fireline is sometimes it likes to knot up on you. Okay, and I know that this looks like it's a little wonky at the moment, and it kind of is, but it'll straighten out in just a bit, and we can always go back as well to uh, straighten it out if we need to. Okay, I am coming out of this size 11, and remember we're treating these two as, as one bead, so I'm putting on the size 8 and the size 11. So I've got both of them, and I'm going to go into the Super Uno. So now it looks like this, and of course that looks even wonkier. <laughs> it's going to look like this for a little bit. Okay, here's where we start doing the bridge, as I like to call it. I'm coming out of a Super Uno, so I'm going to pick up another Super Uno. And then you see I've got one of my pink bridge beads. Instead of picking up one, I'm going to pick up two. Because we're going to start the increase. That is the hallmark of the Dutch spiral. So I've picked up the Super Uno and then two of the pink beads. I'm going to skip the pink bead. And I'm going to go into these three gold beads. 
So see, I skipped the pink going into the gold. It looks like. <laughs> Very strange, I know. But here we go. Now, here we, here we start what I like to think of as the real part. Um, the, this beginning always looks a little strange to me. But I'm coming out of my three golds, so I'm going to pick up three golds. And I'm only going to do a, a couple of rounds of this so you just get the idea. So I've got my three of my gold, and they're sitting on top of this, this um, first uh, four millimeter that I put on. Okay, so now I'm coming out of the four millimeter. I'm going to grab another four millimeter because remember, you're always going to pick up the bead that you're coming out of. So I'm going to go to the second set of the size eight and elevens. I'm going to put my needle through both of them. And pull. So you can start seeing it's it's almost trying to make a cup already. So I'm coming out of the 8 and the 11, so 8 and 11 it is, and going through the second Super Uno. Now one of the things you've, you've got to make sure of when you're going through the second one, and, and that's going to be your, your sequence throughout the rest of this bracelet, always go through the second of the beads that you're you're going into and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So getting to the bridge beads, pick up a super uno and then three of the bridge beads. So three bridge beads and go into the second set of golds. As you can see I've done a few more rounds and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, in a little bit uh, more detail which, how you can tell which beads you're supposed to go into. Right now I am coming out of one of the Super Unos. So I've got a Super Uno and at this point I've got nine of my bridge beads. So I want to skip the first three golds and I want to go into the second three golds. So it's easier to see once you've got a few more rounds on. So it's much easier to see which beads you're supposed to go into because they'll kind of be up beads. As far as length, this part going from one bridge bead to 12 bridge beads is approximately an inch. You're going to have one of these on either side because remember you're going to increase until you get to 12 bridge beads. You're going to keep going with the 12 bridge beads until you're just about to the end and then you're going to start decreasing. You're going to take one of the bridge beads away so it's going to go from 12 to 11 to 10 to 9 etc until you're left with one bridge bead. All right, so you can see I've pretty much finished it up. Um, I do have had part of the clasp on this end, so I'm going to show you on this end what I did. So right now, as you can see, I've got three of my bridge beads, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the last couple of rounds because this is probably the most difficult part of the entire bracelet, is finishing up this other side. It can be a little tricky, so let's see about getting it so that it looks correct. Something to be aware of. If you're having problems with tension, one of the best things to do with tension is to take this in your, in your hand, hold it like this, and then pull kind of down. That helps to go ahead and increase the tension on your last round. All right, this, speaking of last rounds, this is my last round. So I've got to put on the Super Uno, the one lonely bridge bead in pink. And I'm going to go up through my three golds. All right, so we've, we've got the end, but as you can see, it looks kind of funky compared to the other end. So what do we do? And what I'm going to do is put on just one of the gold beads. That will help to hide the thread. And I'm going to pull tight. And as you can see, that pretty much hid the thread. Now, if I wanted to here, I could go ahead and put on one of the 11s, one of the blue 11s. Put it through the next two beads. Remember, we're not putting on 
one of the four millimeters and pull tight. And then here I'm not going to put on any more beads because I think we're, we're okay. And I'm going to put it through the Super Uno and the bridge bead and pull tight. Now I'm going to go through, let's see, these two. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go through these and tighten them up because I want this end to be pretty tight. And it looks like I can go ahead and skip this and pull it in closer. So you get the idea. You just want to pull things in really tight on this end. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go around one more time. Then I'm going to go down through. I'm going to, you know, tie some half hitches. I always want to go ahead and end my thread in the body of the beadwork and string on a new piece of thread in order to do the clasp. So that's what I'm going to do. All right. So I've got a new thread strung on. And right now I'm coming out of the size 8 seed bead. What I'm going to do is pick up two of the blues. Two blue size 11s. Then I'm going to pick up one of the size 8s. I'm going to pick up one of the golds, slide it down, and then I'm going to pick up half of the clasp. So I've got half of the clasp. I've got the one gold here. I'm going to put on another gold if it wants to get on my needle. Okay, so I'm through, through the clasp. I've got another gold and I'm going to put it on the size 8. And then just run it through until it's all snug. So you may have to go and, and hold on to the clasp and then pull, pull on the thread and it'll help to ease it on down. So I'm going to go back through my two size 11s. Let's see if we can get that a little bit better in focus. There we go. I'm going to go back down through the two size 11s. And you see there's a little bit of thread showing. All I'm going to do is hold the clasp and again pull. So right now I've got it coming. I originally came out of this side of the size 11. I'm going to go back through, or excuse me, the size 12, uh, 8. I'll get it right. So I'm going to go back through that size 8. So pull it tight and that's our first leg. What you'll need to do now is get your needle in there and you're going to have to go through some more beads. All right, so I am through this Super Uno, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick up two of the size 11 blues. I'm going to put it up through the already existing 8 on here. Try not to get my thread caught. Not having a whole lot, lot of luck with that, obviously. All right, it's through the eight. Now I'm going to go through this gold, size 11. Through the clasp. Down through the other size 11 gold. So down through it, and then I'm going to go down through those three beads that I just added on. Oops, excuse me, I'm going to go through the size 8 first. Don't forget the size 8, otherwise you'll have to rip it back. So this is the one that I know I came out of, this side of the Super Uno, so I'm going to go down through these two.
and then again I'm going to go through the back side so now just two of these little um, strands looks kind of funky so I need to decide what is going to be my next spot because I want to put one more um, leg so to speak on it so if I look at this I'm thinking these two gold ones right here. Okay, so I'm coming out of these two size 11s. And once again, I'm going to pick up two of the blues up through the size 8. And you know the drill. And I'm going back through these two. So these are the two beads. Let's see. These two. So I'm going to go back through these. And if your thread, the eight pound fire line is a little um, thicker, obviously, than the six pound. And if you're having problems, now I'm using a size 11 beading needle. If you have problems, you may need to switch to a size 12 needle. Um, anyway, so as you can see, I've still got some thread showing, but that's really part of because you're so doing a, a close-up, super close-up on the camera. Um, if I didn't like this, I do have a way of hiding this thread. Um, like I said, I'll discuss that in a future video. But what I'm going to do now is just weave my way down through here and then we will talk about the necklace. First look for this bracelet. I think it turned out really nice. Um, the small clasp at the end um, lets there be very little of a gap between the two ends. So I think it ends up with a nicer look. Sometimes I, I want something big and bold for a clasp. Sometimes I don't. This one I didn't. So there. All right, here's the necklace. So what did I do differently for the necklace? For the necklace, my sequence that I used is going to be a four millimeter fire polished, three of the dragon scale beads. Let's see if I can get this a little bit more in focus. Okay, so I've got the fire polish, three dragon scale beads, an eight millimeter hex, and then a uh, my bridge bead is this little um, color lined aqua, and then I have four delicas that is the end of my sequence. So this is the sequence that I used. Now for this, um, you can tell that it, it looks a whole lot longer, so I used 15 for my bridge beads. So I started out with one, and then I went up to 15 and just kept doing 15 until I ran out of beads, literally. <laughs> so um, I went ahead and did that. The clasp area, I strung on three of the size 11s. I did the fire polished, and then I did a total of four of the Swarovski pearls. And I think these are 12 millimeters, these are 8 millimeters, so I did four of these. Then I put it through a closed jump ring. So this is soldered closed jump ring. And I went back down, you know, did the same thing that I did on this other bracelet as far as, you know, going back in through the back of the bead, etc., etc. So I went up and down three times for this. Once I had that done, then I went ahead and put on this part. I went ahead and, and did a two and two chain because these are 20 gauge jump rings and I wanted it to be a little bit more secure so I put two of them and I think it looks kind of neat anyway. And then these were the size 8 or 18 gauge jump rings and I added three of those. Then my clasp and this thing is super strong. And I did the same on the other side. So that is the difference between this necklace and this bracelet. So they're basically the same. This one has 12 bridge beads. This has 15 bridge beads and I think it, it really does look awesome as a bracelet. Another Dutch spiral that I did. Um, if you'd like me to do a tutorial on this one, it's slightly different than either one of these twos. Um, let me know and uh, go ahead and, and give this video a like or leave a comment below and I'll know that you want me to do a tutorial on this one which I call Sea Life because um, it reminds me of something you'd see in the sea. 
So, I hope you have enjoyed this Dutch Spiral bracelet tutorial. I hope you've had fun making the bracelet and taking what you've learned and applying it to making a necklace out of it. And if you wanted to, you could always have just made the necklace just as long as you wanted it to and skipped all this part and you just, you know, put the clasp on. But literally, like I said, I ran out of beads. <laughs> So anyway, that's it for today. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, I hope you give it a thumbs up. But if you don't already subscribe to my YouTube channel, I hope that you do so. And I'd love to see you over at my website, www.beautajewelrydiva.com. This is Gail signing out, saying have yourself a beautiful day. Bye.